Being stuck at home does have the benefit of having more time to explore your local wildlife. I decided to take it a little step further and see what I could capture on camera. This is the trail camera that I used for that last little clip. You can see that it's fairly basic, it has four AA batteries inside, and you know, it costs less than $50 on Amazon, and you really get what you pay for in this case. I think this resolution comparison speaks for itself. You can tell that the 1080, it definitely isn't really 1080, and even the 720 is kind of questionable. I mean, if you go with the 1080, all it's going to do is take up more memory, so there's really no point in that. So the solution is to just go ahead and bite the bullet and spend three to four times more money on a better trail camera. This is the Browning Recon Force Advantage. You'll see that the layout is a little bit different. You know, the batteries are in a little slot here. The screen is stationary instead of folding out. But, you know, the, the image quality, I mean, there is no comparison here. The Browning is clearly much better. I mean, you get, again, what you pay for. Well, new camera, new problem. It looks like our image is now out of focus. Our camera has a case of farsightedness. So what do we do about that? Do we just toss out the camera, return it, get a new camera? Ah, of course, we just fix it. All we need is some corrective lenses, just like any person would need. Just a tiny bit of science first. We begin with our little Inkscape camera. It has a camera lens and a sensor. The bird sits at the near point focus of the camera, which is about two meters away. At this distance, the light reflects off the bird through the lens and focuses neatly onto the sensor. But you can see the image on the sensor is really small because the bird is, I mean, it's too far away. We want to move the bird closer. So we move the camera so that it's 0.4 meters away from the bird. Now the image is larger, but the light is focusing to a point beyond the sensor, so the image is out of focus. To fix this, we want to add a corrective lens in front of the camera such that the light focuses onto the sensor again. To the camera, it now looks like there is a large bird at the near point focus. The large bird is referred to as the image, and the original bird is the object. The thin lens equation, which describes how the lens behaves, is based on the distance to the image, di, and the distance to the object, do. We can even account for the little space between the camera and the lens, which is about one centimeter. You might have noticed that di is negative. That's because we follow the convention that if the image is on the same side of the lens as the object, then di is negative. If it's on the opposite side of the lens, then di is positive. Now we just have to take these values and plug them into the thin lens equation and solve for f, the focal length of the lens. Here we get 0.485 meters. We convert that to power p by taking 1 over f and we get about 2.06 diopters. So an optical power of about plus 2 diopters is what we're looking for when we pick out our close-up lens. There are many ways to do this, but I'm just going to work with these 62mm close-up lenses because I already had them lying around for my DSLR camera. So what we really want to do is take one of these lenses and basically just hold it in front of our camera, and that's all we really have to do. Now for a quick sanity check. We're just going to hold these lenses in front of the camera. So first, plus one diopter. Looks pretty good. Not perfect, but good. Next is plus two diopters, and look at that, it looks perfect, just like what we expect from our theory. And finally, we're just going to check plus four, just for the heck of it, and we can see that that's, that's just way too much power, it's out of focus again. I wanted something a little bit more elegant than duct tape to hold my lenses to my trail camera, so I just real quick modeled this up in Fusion 360. It's just supposed to be able to snap onto the front of the trail camera and kind of hold the lens in place. The slicing was done in Prusa Slicer, nothing particularly special here in terms of the settings, and I ran the two hour print job on my Ender 3 Pro. As always, I recommend this printer for just about anyone. There are new options available, but I I've never really had any problems with this, it's been a real workhorse. So here we are. I always design and print correctly the first time, every time. But actually, I really need to find a way to recycle stuff like this. But here is kind of a semi-final product. I think I'm going to make edits to it, but it works for now. 
I wanted to do threads, but 3D printing threads with filament, uh, filament type of printer, this fine is just no good. Um, so instead I, I use a snap method, you just press it into place, and it holds it quite nicely. So, we take our camera here, we just snap it into place, and then we should be pretty good to go. So this lens is a little bit large, it kind of covers up those IR LEDs that help with night vision. Um, so I went ahead and also made a model for a 37mm lens, as you can see here. But it turns out that night vision is still a little bit questionable. I'm getting kind of reflections and kind of a halo around the image. But I'm working on a solution to that, so stay tuned and I should have a new version of this at some point in the near future. Well, that's about it. We began with a cheap camera with low image quality. We got a more expensive camera with great image quality, but it wasn't in focus. And then we corrected that focus with an external lens. And with that, I'll leave you with a few more seconds of bird video, and I hope you have a great day.